So one variable inequality is with something like this. You guys had an equation like 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to, let's make that negative 2x plus 1, it's greater than or equal to 3. It's one variable because there's literally one variable in there. And so we'd solve this. We'd subtract 1 on both sides, and we divide by negative 2. When you divide it by negative 2, what did you have to do? Flip the inequality. So we have less than or equal to negative 1, right? And then I asked you guys to graph it. So you put it on a number line because it's a one variable. It's, it's one dimensional, so it doesn't have like the two lines. It only has one line because it's one dimensional. Dimensional, it's one variable. So when we do two variables, it's going to go on a graph because it has the x and the y. But we plot it negative one, and we had to talk about open and closed circles, right? You guys, remember open and closed circles. So was this one an open or a closed circle situation, Hannah? This was a closed circle situation because this means it's included, and included means that it has a closed circle. So we put a closed circle at negative 1, and then we had to figure out which way to shade it. So what does this mean here? What does that, that inequality mean? It will go to the left. What is the words that we use that we can read it? It's less than or equal to, so it goes to the left. And what you could have done there is plugged in any number to the left, right? If I plugged in negative 5 here, is negative 5 less than or equal to negative 1? Is that true? Yeah, and it makes your statement true. So anything to the left makes your statement true. If I plugged in negative 1 and a half, is that less than or equal to negative 1? And that's to the left of it. So that's why we shade it that way, because it made the statements true. So we're going to be looking at this now on a graph. So it's going to be in two variables. There's still going to be shading involved, and there's going to be some sorts of open and closed circles. It's just not going to be the same exact way. So let's go ahead and write that down. I'm going to get straight this out to you guys, and then we'll get started. Alright, so let's start here. The solution of an inequality in two variables is an ordered pair x comma y that makes the inequality true. So we're going to tell whether each ordered pair is a solution of negative x plus 2y is less than or less than 8. So what are we going to do to check if it's a solution? Yeah. We'll just plug in our x and y. So 0 is x, y is 0, right? So we plug those in. So I have negative 0, which really isn't a thing, but I'm going to emphasize that, plus 2 times 0 is less than 8. So negative 0 is just 0, so we have 0 plus 0 is less than 8, so 0 is less than 8. Is this a solution? Is this a true statement? It's a true statement, so 0, 0 is a solution. a true statement, so 0, 0 is a solution. So again, we have x, y. So negative 0 plus 2 times 4 is less than 8. Does everybody know where I'm getting that equation from? You guys see I'm just pulling it from up here. I'm not making up a random equation. just want to make sure you realize that. So I have 0 plus 8 is less than 8. So is 8 less than 8? No. So is this a solution? No, it's not a solution because 8, solu 8 is not less than 8. So 0, 4... 
is not a solution. So I do x comma y again, so I have negative 1 plus 2 times negative 3 is less than 8, so that's negative 1 minus 6 is less than 8, negative 7 is less than 8. Is negative 7 less than 8? Do I have a solution? Yes, you do. All right, what questions do you have about determining solutions before we continue? All right, now when you're ready to flip, go ahead and get a copy down here, folks, okay? two variable inequality. It's really not that big of a difference. There's only one big difference that you have to remember. Um, the graphing of the inequality. So you're going to do the same thing you do, would do with y equals mx plus b, but there's a few differences. So same as graphing a y equals mx plus b equation with some, ups, with some exceptions. But there's a few other things we have to remember. So you're going to graph the inequality like a y equals mx plus b equation, but instead of a solid, always using a solid line, you're going to use a dashed or a solid line. It's like that open and closed circle. So remember, when it was included, what did we use? When it was included, like these ones here, what did we use? We used that filled in circle, right? So that means included, so we used a filled in circle, right? Here, we're going to use a solid line. So if it's included, if it has that line underneath, it means draw a straight line. So if it has a line underneath, it means just connect all your points. What did we use if it was not included? An open circle. So this was not included, and we used an open circle. So for us, what you're going to do to em em emphasize that it's not included is we're going to use a dashed line. Not included means that any point along the dashed line is not included in the solution. So if you have a dashed line and I ask you if a certain point on that dashed line is a solution, it's not. If it's a solid line, it's included, so that point would be part of the solution set. So just be careful with that. And then we're going to do a test point not on the line. So choose a test point on either side. If the point is a solution, if it's true, so basically it's saying if it's true, you're going to shade that side of the line where your test point is. If it's false, if the point is not a solution, shade on the other side of the line where the test point does not lie. So this means you're not going to shade on the side of the point.
All right. So we're going to go through some examples here. You'll have to let me know if you have, if I get to an equation that you guys don't have, because we deleted a few out, and they're not deleted out of this, so I just want to, you'll just have to let me know. All right, do you guys have any questions before we move on? Okay. Beautiful noise. Do you guys have this problem? All right, so is it already in slope-intercept form, technically? Y equals mx plus b, even though it's an inequality. Okay, before we even graph it, will our line be dotted or solid, Morgan? It will be solid. Okay, so it is included, so we'll have a solid line. Morel, help me graph it. Where would I start? So start at positive 1 on the y, and then what do you do? And that allows us to have a positive slope. And yes, you are just using a solid line. Give you straight edges for a reason. Use them. Now we have to deal with shading. Because this is not an equation, the line isn't your only solution. Just like when we had one variable, didn't we have to shade, didn't we have to shade left or right saying anything that was greater than in this case is going to be part of the solution set? So we use a test point. So we choose any point that does not lie on the line. So give me any point, Jacqueline, that does not lie on this line. So Jacqueline chose the point 2, 2. Hello, Dr. Cummings. So 2, 2 is right here in Jacqueline, for Jacqueline's test point. So we said if it's true, we'll shade on that side of the test point, so where that pink dot is. If it's false, we're going to shade away from it because that means that it, these points are not part of the, part of the inequality solution. All right, so we plug in 2, 2. Okay, so we get 2 is greater than or equal to 7. Avery, it's 2 greater than or equal to 7? No. No, that's a false statement. So if it's a false statement, we shade away from our point. So we shade on the side that where the test point is not. So Alex, will I shade here one or two? Where will I shade then? One, one or two? What did you say? One. one. We'll shade in one. So we're saying any point on this side is part of the solution set. So if we chose a point and quickly just plugged it in, it should be a true statement. Just like when we have inequalities in one variable, when we said x is less than two, and we shaded everything to the left. So we were saying 0 and negative 1 were solutions. We're saying any of these points are solutions. So this is the point negative 1, 0. So this is 0 here then. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Is 0 greater than negative 2? So does it make sense that we shade at that side? Okay, really quick question for you. Katie, is the point 1, 4 a solution? Is the point 1, 4 a solution? Yes. Why is this a solution in this case? Which means that all those points are solutions. solutions. They're included. So if it were a dotted line, that would not be a solution. So just make sure you're aware of that as well. All right. Go ahead and flip to the next page when you're ready. Is this the one you guys have? Yes. Okay. 
All right, are we in slope-intercept form here? Well, are we in slope-intercept form? What do I have to do to get into slope-intercept form? So slope-intercept form is y equals ms plus b. You could subtract the 4y. Why would that be it? Why would I, like, ask you not to do that? Not that it's wrong, but why would I ask you not to? That then gives you a negative y, right? And what side do we typically want the y on? The left. We don't always need that, but it is, you know, it makes it easier, especially in inequality. So what could we do instead? Good. So what you said is not technically wrong. It's just easier to have it on the left, okay? So then what, Morel? Right, Kelly? Will my line be dotted or solid in this case? And why is that? This one isn't greater than, it looks like an L, so it's a, a less than, and it doesn't say and equal to or equal to, right? It's just saying it's just less than. Nothing's equal to, so that dotted line symbolizes we're not including the line. So that's the reason why we do that. All right, Sarah. Negative. Oh. so I'm gonna, that's fine. Sarah, I'll have you on the next one. Go ahead. Negative. Start at negative two. Go ahead, Sarah. Then one from there. Which direction? Does that make a negative slope like we want? Yes. And we have to connect it with the dotted line. Mine's not going to show up dotted right away after you erase some things. So ignore the fact that it's not dotted right now. I'll make it dotted in a second. Carly, then we have to do a test point because remember the line is not the only thing that matters here in inequalities. When we're saying less than, we're saying anything less than that equation is part of the solution set. So what, where do you want your test point for, for this one? What did you say? 1 comma 2 is up here. So before we even use the test point, do we think this is going to create a true statement or a false statement and why? So somebody raise their hand and tell me if you think it's going to create a true statement or a false statement and why. Kelly, what do you think? Um, a false statement. And why do you think that? Because um, it's not going to be negative, so there's no way it will be less than negative. Okay, so you can see that these are both positive, so there's no way with all positives to make it negative. It's going to be a positive is less than a negative, right, which is not even true. What's another reason why? Does anybody else have another reason why they think it would be false? Yeah, Sarah. That's not going to necessarily intersect with the line because it's all the way up here, and this is the line here. So think about what the inequality. The inequality is less than. What does that make you think when you see the, the inequality being less than? Think about the shading of that. Jenny? Below the line, okay, because less than typically, like, the y value is going down is less, right? So if we look at this line, it's slanted, but which way looks below the line when you go down, right? So that one's above. So let's see if it's actually false like we think it is. So we're going to put in the point 1, 2. So I get 1 plus 8 is less than negative 8, and just like Kelly said, it gives us a positive number, which is never going to be less than a negative number. So that's false, so we shade opposite of where the point is.
We're going to shade on the side that the, where the point does not lie. So, Olivia, for my shading, is it in one or two? Where am I going to shade? One or two? Two. We're going to shade down here because that's where the point is not. Right. What questions do you guys have so far? <coughs> What questions do you have for me? So if I had presented this to you guys as an equation, would you do any of the shading? No. So please make sure you're looking at if it's an inequality or an equation. You don't shade with an equation, and you don't dot lines ever. It's always a solid line. So please be careful with that. All right, I don't think you guys have this one, right? Or you do? Is this, you guys do have this one? Okay. So it says graph X is greater than, yeah, Jenny. Um, if you could, like, so, like, other people could have plot or true. So you don't So we should probably try a true statement, yes. That's true. So if it's true, you shade on the side where that point is. So let's try to make sure it's true this time. What? No, you will always shade on the same side. So... Even if you choose a true statement and Morgan chooses a false statement, you guys should still shade on the same line side because your statement, you should sit, shade where that point is, and Morgan needs to go to the other side of the line where your point would lie. So you should get the same shading either way. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. An X equation or an X inequality here. What do you know about X when there's no Y involved? What kind of line is going to be drawn? Mackenzie? This is a vertical line has to cut through the x-axis. Vivian, dotted or solid line? So I plot a point at negative 4. And draw a dotted line. Through that, again, I will make mine dotted now. It's kind of hard to see that line, but it's there, and it is dotted. So let's do something real quick here. Let's come up, let's do a point on both sides and kind of talk about what Jenny was saying there. And then I'm going to do the word problem with you. We'll skip some things here. So let's choose a test point on both sides. So I'm going to choose 0, 0 for the one side. And I'm going to choose negative 5, 0 for the other side. Okay, so you can kind of see, sorry, that should be negative 5. So you can kind of see that it doesn't really matter. So if I do 0, 0, we don't have a y to plug into, is 0 greater than negative 4? Is 0 greater than negative 4? So that's true. So you shade on that side of the line. Shade where point lies. So we would shade on this side, right? Correct? Do you agree with that? Now, if we did the other point and got a false statement, is negative 5 greater than negative 4? Is that a true statement? No, so we shade opposite of that line, shade opposite the point. So would we still shade the same spot we did? So, Jenny, do you see that it doesn't matter who, if you get true or false? you'll still shade the same thing because we'd still shade over here, wouldn't we? So that's a really good question to ask. So either way, we're still shading over here. It's just whether you're shading on the side of the point or not. Go to the word problem. Hmm. Before I do that, Sarah... Muncie, right? 
If I asked if the point negative 4, 1 was a solution, what would you tell me? No, because the line is not included in this case. So make sure you understand the dot versus solid. All right, let's go to that word problem whenever I get there. I'll get there. Don't worry, guys. Here you are. All right. You can spend at most $9 on mittens and hats for the winter. Mittens cost $1.50 a pair and hats cost $3 a piece. Write and graph an inequality that represents the amount of mittens and hats you can buy. Identify and interpret two solutions of the inequality. So this is just a two variable instance. It's not a system, which I know is kind of confusing. But we can spend at most $9, right? So is that less than or equal to or greater than or equal to $9? You have $9 in your pocket and you can't spend more than that. So that's less than or equal to $9, right? So we have M, I'm going to call mittens. And H, I'm going to call hats. And I'm just going to label my X and Y axis so I know which one is which. So this is mittens and this is hats. So I know which one is which. So it's a dollar fifty per mitten, so that's one point five m plus three dollars per hat has to be less than or equal to nine. Okay, which one is technically our y, m or h? H is technically our y. Yes, h is technically our y. You're right with H being technically our Y, but I'm going to do this with intercepts real quick. I'm going to solve this with intercepts. So I'm going to have an M intercept and an H intercept. Do you remember letting X equal 0, letting Y equal 0? So let H equal 0, so I'm going to find the M intercept. So that's 1.5M is less than or equal to 9. What's 9 and a half divided by, or 9 divided by 1.5? I think it's four, but just let me know. It's six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, so six is out here. So I'm going to plot a point here at six. I know it's not technically on the graph, but that's what we'll do there. On the M, then I'm going to let M equal zero. So three H is less than or equal to nine. So H is less than or equal to three. When I go to connect these points, should be a dotted or solid line? Dotted or solid? solid. All right. So I'm going to choose 0, 0 as a solution. Is 0 less than or equal to 9? Is 0 less than or equal to 9? Is that a true statement? Yeah. Yeah, so zero is less than or equal to nine. Now, we can't spend, we can't buy negative mittens and negative hats, so I'm not even going to cross the x and y axis here because you can't buy negatives of them. So these are my solutions in this little triangle. The reason I'm staying in there is because really you can't buy negative hats or mittens. So just give me one solution. Anybody give me a solution that's in here? Any one solution? Sarah, go ahead. 1-1 one, one. One, one is inside of here at this point here, so it is a solution. So 1-1 one, one just means you can buy one pair of mittens and one hat for less than $9. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of that one.